Welcome to another episode of the OC Podcast. I am your host, Ricky Valero. On today's episode, we're going to continue on with watching season one of the OC. On today's episode, we're going to watch season one, episode 20, the what, Kenzie? 20, the telenovela. Telenovela. I tried saying that like 20 times. I said it right that time. Yeah. It's such a no tongue power. twister. It really is. I'm just like, we talk, I had to get Kenzie to pep talk before, so I needed to hear her say it so that I could say it back to her and then we'd be good to go. But and it's so funny. You didn't even need me. You could have just, <laughs> said, it. I just said it perfectly. It's hilarious. Um, as always, I'm joined by Kenzie. How are you today? I'm good. I, I just love two episodes in a row. No, Oliver. It's just like <laughs> such a good feeling. It really is. <laughs> Oh man, he really is. It's just, it's kind of happy to be away from him. Um, like, did you, go ahead. It's po- like, I enjoy the drama he brought, but it's just so infuriating. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, because it wasn't exactly just about him either. It was just about everybody else around, like, that made just everything. And I just, so like, mad. how it was Ryan, the only one who saw it. Like, I just, I refuse to believe it. And then not just that, like, and then the people that did end up, like, start picking up like summer was picking up on it luke the two too dumbest late. people too late it's come on guys but um season one episode 20 the telenovela i can't say it now telenovela telenovela listen growing up in texas telemundo because i took spanish like for four years yeah. Barely retained any of it. But let me tell you, my my teachers would always be like, just watch shows in Spanish to like under like to pick up on like actual verbiage and yeah. We watched so many telenovelas. They they're they're far better than any US soap operas, let me tell you. <laughs> but I appreciate the name for the episode. Absolutely. Even Seth brings it up. He yeah, brings it up when he's scolding Ryan about yes, something. He's right. like, come on, get Telemundo. Like, yeah. So, you know, maybe Seth and I watched the same ones. It's, he probably <laughs> did. All right. Um, another synopsis. Um, Seven paragraphs? It's not, no, it's a little bit smaller this time, but I feel like it gives away some stuff here. Oh, great. Um, the Ryan and Marissa thing is more iffy than ever when Teresa Teresa hangs out in Newport. The telenovela <laughs> like suds o rama. What the the telenovela like suds o rama overflows with the Seth Summer Foley's, the Luke Julie Fling, and an insider who may be a threat to the Caleb Kirsten biz it doesn't say business it says biz. wow wow that's a lot to chew on first off tell a novel <laughs> tell a <laughs> tell a novella like suds orama what is that even also um like i just <laughs> have some questions about it's not a synopsis if you say everything also don't refer to a relationship as the ryan and marissa thing yeah that's exactly relationship the ryan issue. marissa thing is okay, more iffy like, than ever. absolutely not okay just saying accidentally i don't like it next week's uh synopsis which is also terrible all right this episode has an 8.0 ranking um, 414. <laughs> I thought you said it had a zero ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, it aired February 25th, 2004. Oh, it's like a month after my birthday. Um, so going into this episode, did you remember that this was the episode? So, you know, in the um, selected image for like the cover yeah. of the episode? Yep. Blew it. Yeah. Blew but it. um I do just want to say I've rewatched the show so many times and I keep saying that, but like this was one of the first shows that I made the decision like myself to watch week to week when it was on mm-hmm. TV. Yeah. And then this was a peak show of I don't know how many of our listeners or if you did this, um, when you bought the DVD of a show you liked. Mm, you had and you just it. watched it over and over yeah. and over and over and like 
but I just remember specifically buying this season of the OC and watching this episode. <laughs> it meant so much to me, and yes. I rewatched it today, obviously, to record, and um, it hits the feels, man. It. Uh, yes. I don't want to be mean to, like, my husband, who's, like, in the other room, but, like, could learn a thing or two from Seth in this episode. Yeah. It, it, I do think this is one of Seth's best episodes. I don't want to, like, spoil my MVP, but, like, um, Seth has kind of been, like, re-watching it now. I've realized, like, Seth is kind of annoying, and sometimes he's just, like, talking and, like, not really, like, being a good friend to Ryan, specifically with everything with Oliver. But I think, like, this episode shows him, like you were saying in the previous episode, more of as, like, a man mm -hmm. and making more adult decisions and i think like he's really coming into his own yep. and this is the episode where i feel like everyone starts to be like i really like seth like i love seth like yeah he it, he he does it man it he goes a great for continuation it. of his arc right you know what i mean from yeah the last episodes you know what i mean he kind of grew up a lot in front of our eyes last week and then this week it's just a it's just a slam dunk um by the end of the episode which is really really awesome love um, it first my first note was did we really need a recap of luke and julie that was my first note whenever i wrote it down i'm just like god lee like, i didn't want to see it but i did need to remember that it is a thing and it's horrible <laughs> and i hate it and ugh, you know exactly. um seth ryan marissa summer everyone's talking about being friends um the undertone of everybody in this episode which is hilarious is when we're Ryan they ever Marissa friends ever <laughs> it's a very solid point like everybody gets um, in on it right you know what i mean throughout this episode it's so funny it's like it's so true like i was really good friends with my husband before we started dating mm -hmm. but like my previous relationships like i was never friends with them like we got together like with the intent of being like in a relationship not being yeah. in a friendship yeah exactly and yeah. it's like that's definitely the case with ryan and marissa like what did they what did they ever talk about like exactly. <laughs> especially like marissa brings it up later in the episode like that they like she's like well do you want to make out like she's like we have nothing else to do like and she's totally joking but it's like because like they never really did anything else yeah they didn't, yeah they didn't. and their relationship was very serious like oh yeah they, like sandy addressed in the last episode that they've already been through so much as like a couple mm -hmm. but it's like that would make it hard to be friends Oh, like they absolutely. went through these very traumatic things, like as absolutely. a couple. Yeah. And I can only imagine going through traumatic things, like as a couple. It's hard to like be around that person. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like on both sides of their stories. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, because it's it's awkward for Marissa because it's it, it's just they've never been friends. Period. You know what I mean? Like you know. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> Oh my God. I, Seth is just, <laughs> Seth's full of himself a little bit early on in this episode. It's kind of funny. Um, you know. Confident, but like, um, so basically like. He doesn't know how to be confident either. Right? Yeah. Like he doesn't know how, like, so he's just being like over the top and like, yes. it's a lot. She talks about how summer he hope I hope she keeps it in her trousers. I'm just like, what? Like who says that? <laughs> exactly. Come on, man. Um Teresa calls Ryan to hang out. So like what do you think? Because she says that she called Kirsten or she called the house and Kirsten gave that number yes. for her. I wonder what their conversation was. Right. Hey, this is a friend from before like they've never met i don't understand how that goes it's very weird very um and then she gets off the phone awkwardly and coming from the other room is her eddie man yeah at this moment just her man um yeah. but eddie eddie but arrived. So it was pointed out by our favorite listener on our last episode that he was on Buffy. Yeah. And it's so funny because I was a huge Buffy fan. 
And did you ever watch Buffy? I did not. Okay, so when they turn into vampires, they like are really ugly. Like, mm-hmm. like they're they. I, I'll show you a picture later. They have like this weird makeup. But I started cracking up because I watch Buffy nonstop. Like, I don't watch it like linear. Like, really, I just like if I don't know what to watch, I just put it on. Right. And then if it's this very serious episode, I like sit down and watch it. But I recently watched an episode with Eddie in it, <laughs> and I've been like, when is Eddie gonna pop up? Like. But I could not stop picturing him, like, as, like, the ugly vampire <laughs> thing. And I could not stop laughing. <laughs> but, That's um, funny. remember house phones? Yes. Like, it's so weird. She was, like, <laughs> calling up a house phone. <laughs> it's just weird. I, it, it just brings back memories of, like, you would have to battle over who got the house phone. And- yeah, okay, I just want to say, like, wouldn't he un- know that, like, because she goes, it was a wrong number. And I'm like... Wouldn't he know that, like, she was, like, talking, not, like, a, who is, hello, like, click, wrong number. Yeah, like, the, like wrong numbers, the, the call literally only lasts, like, 10 seconds, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah, not, like, a, it was there? definitely, like, a prolonged no, conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Seth makes a comment next, he goes, who knew Ryan Atwood was a friend, it, it was into, it was so friendly. <laughs> so funny it's really funny because like you could perceive that as like he's trying to talk to too many girls but it's because he keeps telling everyone like he's only friends with marissa he's only friends with teresa Teresa. like (laughs) it's so funny um and then poor ryan i mean poor seth a guy is talking to summer about doing the kissing booth in front of seth doesn't even acknowledge his existence um it kind of pushes by him a little bit sad it is um and then Anna basically overhears it. You know what I mean? I like that. I won't lie, like so Seth and Anna broke up. And I like Anna's character like a lot. But I kind of yeah. like just totally forgot about her because she wasn't in the episode like at all. And I kind of just like forgot about her because I was like, where is she? Like and I think yeah, they, they, they said yeah. she went back to Pittsburgh. Right. But like you know how like she was in that one episode of Cotillion and then and she then wasn't in it for right. like five episodes? Yes. So like I felt bad, but I kind of just totally forgot about her. When she showed up, I was like, oh. she's still she uh, oh. uh, uh, uh. Yeah. She's and so then bad. I read the title of next week's episode, so I was like, oh, like <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, no. It was weird that she just like comes and goes. Like it's she's weird. So- yeah, she's around for Cotillion and then gone but for the, five episodes. But the writers have a dress that they wish they did more with Anna. So I, she's great in this episode. Yeah, I and I feel like so we were talking about Seth doesn't know how to be confident. Like Anna is the reason he does yes. a lot of the things he does this episode. Hundred percent. And I mean, it makes me sad. Like she brings it up. Like she doesn't know why she's trying to help him because like they were together, and like now she's trying to help him with the girl that like. This other yeah, girl. That, yeah. But like, it's just really funny. Like, I totally forgot about her. But my parents are from outside Pittsburgh. So when Anna, he's like, How is Pittsburgh? And she, he's like, You know, like the home of Heinz Ketchup, Andy Warhol, and Mr. Rogers. Like, when I was a kid and I used to complain about going to visit my family in Pittsburgh, my parents would take me to Andy Warhol's museum, <laughs> Mr. Rogers' set. And my parents are huge Steeler fans. So, like, Heinz Stadium and like, there's a whole debate in my family. Like someone bought Hunts once and Ooh. they were people were like, Are you kidding? Like Heinz Ooh. is the superior ketchup. Ooh. And um, but I used to use that as like an excuse. Like when I used to try to beg my friends to come with me to Pittsburgh, I'd be like, Well, as Seth Cohen said, it's the home of like Yeah, exactly. So when he dropped that line, I was like, I remember using this line as a kid. Like <laughs> I use the so same funny. line. But um, I feel for Seth, like not yeah. only did that guy talk to Summer, like, Seth wasn't even standing there. He's talking about her getting paid to kiss guys. Yes. Like, over and over and over and over. Like. It's a kissing booth. And like. the way he says it is so repulsive. Like, he goes, I couldn't, when I was thinking, I need a girl who will get kissed for money. I couldn't think of anyone other than you. I was like, vomit? Like, <laughs> oh, my God. So gross. Oh. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Then we transition to quite possibly one of the funniest. It gets, it's not funnier yet, obviously, because, you know, Caleb talks to Kirsten and wants Sandy's help. Okay. 
you're not Kirsten's biggest fan all the time. Did you love this moment? Oh, it's fantastic. It's so good. We were talking about Seth really coming into his own in the last episode. Kirsten's also kind of getting more like assertive and like, yep. not like assertive in a bad way, just like in a, I, I have feelings. I yes. have opinions. I have relationships. Like, yeah. cause she's saying, don't use me to use Sandy. Like if you're going to use my husband, yes. at least talk to him. <laughs> Which is funny enough because he's never, never been nice to, to Sandy like a day. I mean, he's... No. And like, she's saying like, I'm acknowledging that you're just using my husband. Like, you're not even like going to pay him. Yes. Because like, no. it's a job. Like at the yeah. end of the day, like it's a job. Yeah. And she yeah. knows they don't need money. She's not asking him for like compensation. No, she's no, like, no. just speak to him yeah, like a I'm... human. Just say, I appreciate you doing me this favor. Like... Yeah. Which is funny because even whenever he shows up, he can't help but just not be nice. Like, be but I really like that. Like Kirsten, yeah, she stood around the situation and like she. I think she learned from the last time that he asked yeah. her to do something because she asked him to break up with Julie, and it kind of backfired. And like Julie's turning into her friend. Yes, you, and uh, yeah, she's exactly. kind of like, I don't like that. Like, if you're gonna use me, like you're gonna go about it differently. Exactly. Um, we we get cut to another poor, poor Seth moment. Who's hiding behind a newspaper as he's watching Summer sitting there with all these preppy boys at this little table? Which together. okay, like Seth was so I was like in middle school, I guess. No, I think I was in sixth grade during the season. Um, because it's two thousand three, four. Oh, so I was in middle school. Okay, so, I mean, like, I was a huge emo kid. Um, but, like, I, no one I was, not even just, like, my friends, because I was in cheerleading, too, forever. Um, but, like, if you showed me those guys in Adam Brody, all of the girls I was friends with in middle school would have gone to Adam Brody. So, like, I get it. They're pre- depicting him as, like, a nerd, quote-unquote. But, like... Don't act like he's hard on the eyes or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, it's again, not he's like, like an outcast per se, but like. It was like that was his, it was his name, Danny, the, the crazy the kid. The funny guy. Yeah. The fun, he's not a guy. Like, if it was. If he, he was ugly. Like him, yeah. If he looked like him. I would get it. I'm no offense to the actor that no, played Danny. But, but like, <laughs> I would get it. But like, Adam Brody's like. It's a good looking guy. Yeah. yeah like, he's a really good looking guy. It was just his birthday, I think, over the weekend, and um, or like last weekend, and beautiful guy. Yeah. Married to Blair Waldorf in real life. We love yeah. it. It was your He's birthday last aged. weekend too. Yeah. I thought I was turning twenty eight all year, and then like a week before my birthday, I had this like meltdown that I'm turning twenty nine. Oh. And I was like, oh, I'm almost thirty. Yeah. I wonder what Seth Cohen is like at thirty. Man. Not well. I bet you not well. I bet you, what kind of job do you think he has? Uh, at 30. Probably, he probably works for his mom. So I've always thought that. But Ryan ends up, right? Yeah. Kind of? Yeah. You're right. I'm trying to think about that. Because he would, he, he's not, he's not quick-witted enough to be his dad. So he couldn't be a lawyer. I don't think he's that he's smart, but he's not, I don't know. That's interesting. What would, I don't know. Let's just, let's just, I mean, we're bringing back gossip girl for, uh, you know, a re, we, just bring back the OC, like just for. But the thing about gossip girl is it's all new people. And yeah. I'm begging if Josh Schwartz, who I'm assuming he has to at least be an executive producer on the new gossip girl. Yeah. Um, I saw he shared please... something on, uh, on, on, twitter or instagram about it please 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 josh if you're listening put leonardo dicaprio on it like i know that sounds like a stretch but he was dating blake lively while she was like on it so in my mind he watched it yeah and they just dis- they discussed it yes can you imagine leonardo dicaprio academy award winner and hear me out bring Blair Waldorf back and then make it an alternate universe where Blair ended up with Seth Cohen instead of Summer. I like it. 
Oh my God, it could be the ultimate crossover event. The crossover event we've all been waiting for. So this is going to be uh, a public plea in the middle of the episode. Josh Schwartz, please come on the podcast and talk this. Yeah, that would be so cool. I'm gonna like post this on Instagram. I'm gonna tag him in it. I'm gonna get every. If you're listening to this and follow me on Instagram, yeah. tag Josh Schwartz. I would love just to conversate about this. You know, to be a cool way to cap off uh, one of these episodes. Just like, where does he think they would all be? Exactly. That would be one of the questions that we asked him. Like, where- or okay, and what would a, the OC quarantine be like? Oh like, what would God. they all be doing? <laughs> They'd all be at the Cohen's house. Like, everybody would yeah. be at the Cohen's house. Like, it would because, it- like, even when um, not to get into a spoiler, but like, even when um, Julie moves into that huge different house, mm-hmm. it's like a cold kind of house. Like, the mm-hmm. Cohen's house is big and fancy. It's- but it's homey Family. and exactly. warmy. And yes. Like, um, so I do think I agree that they would all be there. I wonder what it'd be like. And like, I wonder like how would Seth handle quarantine Chris Mika? Oh, he would freak out. Yeah. Yeah, he would definitely freak out. Like a hundred percent would a hundred percent freak out over. It. I I would like like I just think back of like do you like when I watch something sometimes I watch it and I'm just like why are they not wearing masks like it's just like I think it all the time <laughs> and so I like I always think about this like they're filming Gossip Girl the reboot right now and obviously like they show them on set wearing masks and then when they're filming they're not wearing them but because they film it in New York there's all these people in the background who will have masks on. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to yeah. be like weird that there's going to be people in the background, like pedestrians that have masks Wearing mask masks on. and stuff like, exactly. It's so weird to me. But at the same time, I don't want to watch anything about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. I want 100%. to just like, like, I don't want to watch a show where they're like talking about wearing masks and like, am I comfortable going to like the office? Because like, it's like going around, like, it's weird. I can't believe I got us on this tangent. I'm so sorry, everyone <laughs> listening. Anyway. But back to the result. Josh Schwartz, come on the show. Um, yes. Please. He's like, not if you do these sidetrack <laughs> conversations. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Um, all right. So Anna calls out Seth Cohen. Completely calls him out. And um, Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's she just kind of calls him out for basically sticking his head between his legs and not saying anything to Summer, just taking it, taking it on the chin that she's just not very uh, uh, wants to be publicly known, which is a hilarious conversation a little bit later, which we'll get into. But I have a lot um, of thoughts on that. So yes, it'll be another tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that Anna's like calling him out on it but then you can also tell she's kind of like upset about the whole situation like she doesn't want to be in this situation exactly she's she's a trooper i mean obviously you know what i mean like it's 100 percent. but um at the same time it's very awkward right you know she's just like they just they just broke up literally I mean, well, actually, she broke up, went out of town, and by the time she got back in town, Summer and Seth were dating. Like, she was gone for, like, a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Marissa and Ryan, oh, my God. How, or, sorry, I skipped the part. I mean. Because who can blame you? I mean, exactly. So, Luke and Julie, well, Luke is in the hallway at his locker, and he closes it, and Julie's standing there, dressed Honestly, not provocatively, is they just shoot it to make her look provocative. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Because it's not an inappropriate outfit in any way, but the way they shoot it is to make it look more, like, put on. Right. Um, Because, like, Julie's kind of always dressed like that, because Julie has, like, a nice body, so she's, like, dressing where, like, you can tell she has a nice body because... Exactly. Yeah, but they're just shooting it as, like... She's looking scandalous. Like exactly. she was gonna wear heels and a skirt no anyway, matter what. Regardless like, of the situation going on with Luke or not. Um, but then so she's like, We can't do this, Luke. And he's like, Oh my god, you're already ending it? And she's like, No, it's not in the hallway. I'll see you tonight. Yeah, exactly. Ex- yeah. Oh god, which just gives me the heebie jeebies thinking about it. Because at first I was like, Oh, she changed her mind. You yes. know, she came to her senses. Yes. Because they did try to play it like she was lonely. It was Valentine's Day and she was drunk. 
Yeah. But then I was like, maybe she's, they're addressing Never. that and she's just coming to her senses, but no, yeah. she'll see him later tonight. Ugh. Um, and then Jimmy comes up. <laughs> God bless Jimmy. Yes. One, he's just so aloof, has no <laughs> idea what's going on. Two, like, Luke is just so awkward. He's panicking. He's like, he can't believe it. Yes. And then um, he's just like stumbling. He like runs into his thing. And I love that Julie's like, do you remember Luke? And he's like, yeah, like what? Like this is a kid they've known 15 years. Like, yes, they remember him. Like, like Luke and Marissa were like high school. Like they were going to get married. Apparently, yes. You know, right. like um, just super awkward. Uh uh, Marissa and Ryan, super oh. awkward. I can't stop saying super awkward because this is the theme of the last episode, the theme of this episode. Um, so Marissa and Ryan, Ryan's kind of like, I'm sorry about earlier. Like it was really weird. Like, I, yes. like it was weird. And you know, to me, I'm like, that's addressing the situation enough. And then he's like, we should hang out. And I'm like, why <laughs> would you say that? You know, when you say that to someone that's like an acquaintance and you don't really mean it. Yeah. You're, you're hoping that. I mean, obviously this doesn't happen anymore because of the situation. Like yes. the one nice thing that's come out of COVID is you don't have to pretend you want to hang out with people. <laughs> exactly. You could just um, So, but this isn't happening to them. Like Ryan's like, we should hang out. And you can tell the second he says it, he's like, why did I say that? <laughs> exactly. But Marissa is desperate to hang out oh. with Ryan. And yes. she's like, okay, what are you doing tonight? And he's like, well, tonight's no good. And she's like, oh. And then he's like, but what about right after school? And she's like, that's perfect. And I'm yeah. like, you guys are dumb. Like, I don't know why you guys are doing this. It's funny because like you said, the theme of the episode is that they're not friends. Right. But they can't stop trying to say <laughs> we are friends. We are friends. Yes. So and I think like there's like this unsubconscious, like they're trying to prove to everyone that they're friends. Friend. Exactly. But it's like, you guys really don't have to. Yeah, nobody nobody believes you. and You don't also, have to worry about it. Yeah, like it's... Move it's on bizarre. Um, it's funny too, because it's kind of come full circle because Ryan was very hypocritical of Seth and his love triangle. So, yes. and, you know, it, it's not... Now really, he's kind of, It's not a triangle it isn't, love, but, but it is no. a triangle. Yes. Of Everybody. faking friendships. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb has arrived. Okay, so I don't like the situation, but this is one of my favorite interactions of the last, like, maybe five episodes. Easily. So Caleb goes, what is that about what Sandy's eating? And my husband yells at me all the time because I'm a really picky eater. So Dang. my husband will be eating something. I'm like, that looks disgusting. He's like, don't <laughs> say that about the food that I'm eating. He's like, that's so rude to say I that about the food that I'm eating. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? That's that's true. Like, that's not very nice. Yeah. Um, Caleb also is like me. He's like, what are you eating? Like, he's so judgmental. And Sandy goes, it's my mother's meatloaf. And Caleb's face gets panicked. And he's like, your mother's here? He looks so upset. And he's like, no, but her recipe is. He's like, oh. And he's like, I can get you some. And he's like, absolutely not. And then the sight of your mother's meatloaf might turn me into a vegetarian. Insane. Insane. Which is funny because we know what this is leading to with Caleb, right? You yes. know what I mean? Like he is trying to show up and ask this man for a for favor. For a favor. And, and he he's is insulting. And like Sandy's one of those people, like you have to be nice about his mother. Yes. And to insult his mother's food is not going to be a way to get a favor done. No. Um, but he so sits good. down and he does ask him and he's like, did Kirsten ask you to say this? Because Caleb's like, you know what? I really appreciate if you could do this for me. <laughs> he says, And it's, like it's so unnatural. Like it doesn't sound sincere, but Sandy knows like him just saying that is a lot. Yes. And, um, uh, so Sandy's like, you know what? I, don't, I like to keep my wife on her toes. Like, she thinks she knows me. I'm yeah. going to prove she doesn't. It's hilarious. It's so good. It's like, I want to surprise her. So and I'm, I'm going gonna, just... gonna to look into it. And then Caleb's like, so can I get a piece of that meatloaf or what? Like, <laughs> I just find it so funny that whenever he just basically is asking him for the favor, Sandy's just so blown away at first. He's like, oh my God, this is the high, like, 
Caleb never says anything nice, never wants anything from Sandy. He thinks that everything Sandy has is because of him. And it's just like this particular moment, Sandy has been living for the entire existence of him and Kirsten. Especially because like you can tell any other time that he's needed something from Sandy, which is probably really never. Yes. That he's made Kirsten do it. So he's never had like the satisfaction of of, like hearing Caleb saying these words. Like it's hilarious. Transition to Jimmy and Julie. Jimmy super awkward moment to me. <laughs> like I I think it comes across not awkward in comparison to everything else that's awkward. But because we know why Julie is so happy, it's awkward. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Ugh. Okay, so so nice to Jimmy. She's so nice to Jimmy. And she's very complimentary of um what I've been trying to hype up a little bit. Mm-hmm. That Jimmy is taking such an interest in Marissa. Yes. And he really knows, like, a lot that's going on with her. Like, yeah. when he asks her about Ryan, he's not surprised by what Marissa's saying. Because he knows, like, he t- you can tell he talks to Marissa every day about everything going on. So he knows, like, he probably yeah. knows more about what went down with Oliver, Marissa, and Ryan than Julie does. Exactly. 100%. And she's saying, like, you know, that shows in the conversation we just had with the dean or whatever. Like, you know what's going on. And he's like, wow, like, Caleb and you must be doing pretty well. And she's like... Super impressed. Caleb and I aren't together. And he's like, oh. then why are you so happy and nice? Like, He's like, who knew being poor and single would agree with you so much? Like, so, <laughs> such a so burn. Good. So good. Um, Seth and Summer. Where is Summer's family? I've... Never, never around. Like, never around. Like, even when, I don't know, like, I was never really home. My mom was, like, a stay-at-home mom by the time she had me. My, and so she was always at home, one. Two, if she wasn't at home, I was definitely not allowed to have boys over. Yeah, just chilling at the house. Like. 16, 17 years old and just having. Uh, it's Seth's weird. Seth's got a key to the house, I swear. He must Apparently. <laughs> Um, Summer was a relationship private. So I love her rant about (laughs) like celebrity relationships. And I can't figure out for the life of me of like whose relationship specifically she's talking about. Because she's like, the movie's called off. The press goes wild. Strip clubs. Because at first I thought she was talking about Brittany and Kevin. Mm -hmm. With the juicy tracksuits, the strip clubs. Super Brittany and Kevin specified. The movie called off, like, she lost me. It must be fictional. I don't know. Somebody knows. Let me know. Maybe it's Ben and Jen. Oh. J-Lo, not Jennifer yeah. Garner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Maybe. Because she did, she was fond of juicy tracksuits. Yes. Um. But it's hilarious, though. But it's, like, such a hilarious rant because she's, like, weddings called off, no more babies. <laughs> and I'm, like, they're dating. And, like, also, like, I'm not a teenage boy, but I'm assuming being a teenage boy having sex and the girl talking about babies is like red alert. Terrifying. Red alert. Red alert. Terrifying. Like, like, she's she's like, got the next 20 years planned for us already. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> um, but it's just like really funny because then Seth is like, no, listen. And she just pulls the covers over their head. And she just starts kissing him. Like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Yeah, um, she knows all she has to do is pull the covers up, take her top off, and Seth Cohen is in. You know, he's just, yeah. He's but like, he eventually changes his stance, but it's just like really funny. She's like, "Let me just put this off a little longer." Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's really funny. Speaking um, of awkward, <laughs> I just can't stop with the awkward. Um, Ryan and Marissa are hanging out. It's super awkward, right? Oh my God, it's so weird. Um. And it's so They're, funny because they've hung out before, but it's this. So, okay, sense. do you think maybe they should have hung out in a group setting? Yes, like maybe not hey, Seth and Summer, Summer but right. maybe like Luke or something, yeah. or like Luke. maybe Seth, Summer, and Luke, or hear me out, Luke and Anna. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, because Marissa and Anna are best friends. Yeah, they never address how that happened, but they they always have like little moments. I'm like, what is going on? They hug each other before they leave parties um, and all this good stuff. 
uh, but it's really awkward. Um, and then Marissa makes this joke. She's like, maybe we should just make out because she's like, what do we do before? Yeah. And she's like, I'm kidding. And then they start making jokes about like Luke. And then she's like, and Oliver. And she and Ryan's like, too fucking soon. Yeah, way too, too soon. fucking soon. Way too soon. Like, not it's even. Like, have you seen that movie Bachelorette with um, uh, Kirsten Dunst? And, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there's this moment in it where one of them makes a joke about Princess Diana dying. And she's like, too soon, man. Too soon. And it's so funny because it's like 20 years ago. Any way for you to bring Princess Diana and or the crown into this episode? Fantastically done. It will always happen. <laughs> and I just want to say, it's too soon to make jokes about Oliver, and it's too soon to make jokes about Princess Diana. Boom. Boom. Anyway. Roasted. Teresa shows up in the midst of Ryan and Marissa. Shows up early. Like, she's like, not supposed to be there till later. I like that she shows up and she's like, I'm early. Instead yeah. of just being like, we had plans. Like, I didn't know you had pre-plans. Like, like yeah, exactly. it's like when, um, I guess it's so awkward, like not anymore, but when you would make plans to go out with someone and you'd show up and they were like pre-gaming with their other friend. Yes, yes, yes. You yes, weren't yes. invited to the pre-game. Yeah, you but were, like, exactly, but you're there to be, yeah. The, the, you were supposed to be there at six, but apparently everybody else got the invite to be there at five. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, like <laughs> you show up early with your own bottle and then they're yeah, like, exactly. oh, we already opened a bottle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's exactly what's happening, except it's Ryan's friends. Yes. Quotations. Friends. Um, Sandy's gloating. Sandy's gloating. Uh, so he's kind of like, gloating and then he very smartly and you can see this is the attorney in him transitions into what do you know about uncle sean yes to kirsten like yes so he is gloating he's like i can't believe Kier like caleb asked me for help like so like up and i'm excited that like caleb came crawling to him yep but then he's like i was looking into it and like what do you know about this guy like what does he do around the office day to day like because Sandy is smart. Sandy knows there's only so much you can get from like a report yes, or exactly. like yeah. paperwork. Like yeah. he's like trying to get a feel without making it like official. Like he's no, just like he's just trying, trying to get his wife's opinion on who this, you know, who this guy I'm supposed to look into and help and et cetera, et cetera. But then my favorite thing is so Sandy's like poking and prodding about Uncle Sean. Yep. And then Seth is poking and prodding about Teresa, yeah. which then turns into Sandy and Kirsten poking, poking and prodding about Teresa. Like, so it's good. just like this really funny, like, you can tell Sandy is Seth's dad. Yes. You know? Like the oh, way absolutely. that they word questions and like, they're friendly, but then they're like, so what are your true intentions? <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> like, it's really funny. So funny. And then that's whenever, uh, Marissa and Ryan are going back as friends and then Sandy goes, when were they ever friends? It's like the funniest recurring line of the whole episode because like they all say it. Like Summer says it, Seth says it, Sandy yes. says it. Yeah, it's like, so good. And then I just love that like Ryan and Marissa secretly have this like, we have to prove we were friends yes, at one exactly. point. Exactly. Like, it's like <laughs> they can't budge like, on the idea of them not being friends, even though they were never really friends. But I do admire their commitment to it because I think like a larger part of it that they're not addressing is that like Ryan's best friend is Seth yep. and, Su and Marissa's best friend is Summer and like they're together. Yep, exactly. They never like address it, but like I think a large part of it, them trying to like save face and be like, we're fine is that they don't want their best friends who are in this new relationship that like Summer's already having like kind of issues like being yes. in public with. Yep. They don't want them to have this other issue of like, is it awkward for Ryan and Marissa? Like, yeah. exactly. which like, I kind of wish they would address. It just further proves my, my battle every week. They are not best friends. No, they are the <laughs> worst. Yes. Like Seth, and Ryan, yes. Marissa yes. and Summer, no. Maybe Marissa's remember. best friends with Anna for real. Yes, because maybe <laughs> she actually listens to her problems and figures things out and helps her through situations. This is like just too weird. It's and then terrible. to continue on, too weird as a phrase. Oh, God. 
Luke and Julie like post sex at a motel. Um, so this is where it just like really hit me in the face. Like this is so inappropriate. Yes. Where um, he's like, well, I have to get to home room as he's getting dressed in a motel. Like, and then <sighs> she's on the phone with Caitlin talking about like her science project or something. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. And then I love, like, Julie addresses it. She's like, this is not the stuff of romance. This is, like, no. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, that's it. You know? Done. Like, done. Finished. Like, but there's more later. And then yeah. um, Luke is leaving the motel. Yeah. And he passes Teresa, yeah. whose room is right next door to mm. Luke and so, Julie's. So juicy. So scandalous. Yeah, which comes into play a little bit later. Which has a really cool shot later. Oh, it's a fantastic shot. Loved it. Um, then we cut to my favorite lunch buddies, <laughs> Marissa and Ryan. <laughs> um, they have the lunch friends. together. The but friends. I just want to point out, when they're eating this lunch, they seem like friends. Yeah, they're having they have friendly much. banter. Like yeah. she's like, "I'll kick your ass at that game later." Like yeah. she's like, "It's friendly." Yeah, I, like I liked it. It, it was like too. not an awkward moment, like at all. Like yeah. I think, like at first when he's like, "Can I sit here?" It was kind of awkward. Yeah. But they fell into a natural yeah, conversation, and, and yeah. like, I don't know, it didn't have lulls or anything. No. Like, very. It was funny. a nice conversation. Exactly. Um, but then we do cut to something awkward, which is Anna screaming at Cohen. Yep. And like, stand up for yourself. Call like, him a coward, you know? You're a coward. Take a stand. Like, um, I just want to say it's really intense for, like, a friend. You're very much so. Like, she really, like, laid, laid into him. Like, you know what I, mean? I just felt like it was a lot. Like, you could tell they had, like personal things going on yeah i don't sure, know absolutely like she's still she's stuck in a rock and a hard place but she's like if you're going to break up with me to be with this woman like, you need to step up to the place exactly. like, step up to the plate and quit being a little bitch like that's exactly what it is really funny um then we transition to sandy and uncle sean yeah okay nice. so he is in his restaurant that's not open waiting yeah. for Sandy instead of the opposite. Sandy's Very clearly caught in by surprise. Yep. And Uncle Sean has opened a nice bottle of a scotch, which I would be kind of pissed about. Um, Super pissed. And this is um, a continuity error that I will bring up in a further episode. Um, something about a liquor license that hasn't happened yet, but liquor would not be on the premise without a liquor license. Exactly. But he makes it very clear that he opened the bottle from Sandy's supply. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. At first, they're kind of like bonding, you know, yeah. like I knew this, per this celebrity that like yeah. came here, like all this stuff. And then um, Sandy's kind of like, you know what? I was looking into this. You're kind of shady. Yeah. The crime you're committed of is not as innocent as you guys are portraying. Yeah. And Uncle Sean takes a, a spin and he's like, you know what? You don't settle this. I'm going to open up all this dirty laundry I know about Caleb. Yeah. And Sandy knows, as does Uncle Sean, that means Kirsten will be involved. 100%. Like, it's not just Caleb. No. because It's Kirsten. Yeah, it's the whole family. Um, I it's just... He just black starts, you know, he's going to blackmail him, basically. You know I'm not I mean? into blackmail. And Sandy delivers a line later that is, it explains further why me and most people are not into blackmail. Yeah. Um, it's just not a good situation. And then we're brought into another not so great situation to me, Teresa and Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, how your uh, hatred has. Uh, I just, it's not like hatred. It's just like. She acts so mature, but like her actions aren't, and it bothers me. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like she acts like really grown up and stuff, and then I'm like, but your actions are so like teenager like. Like I know she is a teenager, 
but it's like, don't act so wise beyond your years. If you're making the same stupid decisions that like Marissa is like, it, yeah, you're not like bad. she acts like Marissa acts all hoity toity and like above her. But like, I, I really don't think Marissa does. No, like, she Marissa never like she, Summer does, right? Summer, Summer acts, does. Like she's hoity toity, but, like, but Marissa has never given yeah, me like that Yeah, like Marissa's vibe. very like even when like they had that awkward moment in the last episode where like Teresa was like a cater waiter, like she never like acted weird or anything. Like and, like, huh. like I feel like Summer like she's like you pointed out in the last episode she was like she's pretty for like Chino right. to like correct herself, but like Marissa was like, no, she's genuinely really pretty. She's like, she's right. really smart. Exactly. Like, and I feel like she could have easily been like, well, she's a cater waiter and I'm a guest at this app, like this party. Yeah. But Marissa never did because I don't think Marissa like sees like that. Like, no, definitely not. And I think like, that's something I know all of us really like about Marissa, that she's not like that. And exactly. like, and she could be but very I feel much like, like that. I feel like Teresa acts the opposite, that Teresa's like, I know Ryan, like, and I like, I like have this connection to him and I'm so smart and I'm so much older. Like, I'm like, you're the same age and you're making the same dumb decision. Yeah, I mean, you're the one that has a boyfriend at home and still trying to get. Yeah, and that's like how this whole situation is like they're eating ice cream, Balboa bars, and they're making fun of Newport. Yeah. And then Teresa's like, well, I can't just live here because like I left behind my mom and she's like, and Eddie. Yeah. And he's like, you're still with Eddie? Like, the news to ryan like had no idea and i'm like this is another reason like i don't like her like she's i think i know what she's doing and she's putting out like touch touchy feelers like is the situation with ryan a situation like do i like ryan yes but like she doesn't realize what situation she's putting brian into Mm -hmm. and i don't like that and i feel like marissa wouldn't do that marissa would have been like I don't know. Yeah, I just feel she, like Marissa, if Marissa was doing that, she wouldn't do it intentionally, but I know Teresa's doing this all intentionally, and that's what bothers me. Yeah, she's just trying to play her cards to see where, is is this thing with Ryan a thing? Is this it's somewhere like, where we She's are playing going? her cards, and Ryan's like a card to her, but exactly. I'm like, Ryan is a person. <laughs> like, exactly. Ryan is back on a nice track for himself, like, he got away from all this other drama, like yeah. in Chino. Yes, there's drama in Newport, but like he's doing well at school. He has a nice family surrounding him. Like, yes. I understand the whole point of the show is relationship drama, but to me, like Ryan is going through all this stuff personally with his family, with his new family. Yeah. Like, does he need to be in a relationship? Exactly. Yeah. Exa- it's not very it. healthy. No, and you're bouncing from one to the other. The one that you thought you loved, the one that you fought for, the one that you argued for. Like the one that you- I'm not Marissa's biggest fan, specifically Marissa and Ryan together. Right. But it's way too soon for him to be like into somebody else. On top of all the family drama he has going on. Exactly. Yeah. There's so much going on, and he's and it's funny because he's like very critical of like seth and his circumstances of what he, he is going through. and it's like you're doing the same thing exactly and i mean in his head the marissa thing's done but he hasn't really kind of said dealt with it right he's never really said to marissa hey we're done we're over with and then pursuing Teresa or figuring out what Teresa is but even throughout this episode like he finds out that you know Teresa Teresa is not necessarily single like he she just said I, I'm still with Eddie exactly and he's and he's still... kind of still like so they have like a serious moment where she's like well you just don't know how to talk to Marissa yes and he's like you're right and then she's like making jokes because it got too heavy which I understand is like a defensive right yeah. reaction for sure but like Ryan does need to talk. Like, I don't know who to, but like, I personally think he should confide in Sandy. For sure. But I think he's feeling like, well, I tried to talk to Sandy about Oliver and he kind of like shut me down. Right. But like, he needs to find somebody because like, it's not Teresa to me. Like, I think whoever he opens up to should not be a romantic interest. Yeah, because this is the, the first person that he's really opened up to in this entire show was her right you know yeah really like she was and obviously right place right time type of situation too but like he unloaded to her she's also interested also finds out that they she's got a boyfriend and it's like 
hey dude like, and it's like a boyfriend he knows like when she says eddie he immediately is like you guys are still together yes it's like too much yeah oh 100 percent um seth flipping out on summer is hilarious it's um so it's so funny because he's like at first he's like kind of like assertive but then when she's not listening he's like you know what no like he's like he goes I can't acknowledge you privately until you acknowledge me publicly. Yeah. And it's really funny because at first she's like not really taking him seriously. It's like all playful. But then when he says that, she's like, what? Like, are you serious? Oh no. And then he starts getting, like, he just leaves and you're yes. like, shit, he's serious. <laughs> like, exactly. like, uh, it's so funny. But then I thought that was dramatic. But then Eddie is just chilling at the Cohen's house in their driveway. Everybody knows um, where the Cohen lives, by the way. Everybody apparently. Knows where the apparently. Um, they have a chill conversation about, like, have you seen Teresa? And he's like, well, we're engaged. And Ryan's like, engaged? Oh. Ryan does not hide his facial expressions very well, I just want to say. But then he's like, congratulations, man. Like, that's so exciting. Like, Wow. Um, and he's really awkward. He's like, I just saw your brother in jail. Like, <laughs> um, Ryan's, Ryan's like, you lies. know what? Ryan lies. lies. He's like, I haven't seen her. I haven't heard from her. And he's like, well, she just left. Like, no, 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 nothing. Like, I don't know what to do. And I will say, Eddie seems really concerned. Yes. 100%. He's not being like aggressive. He's not being no. like investigatory. Like, he's just asking Ryan, like, have you heard from her? Like, I'm just really concerned about like, where she wealth. is, exactly. what she's doing, what she's thinking, because like yeah. we're engaged and she's pieced out. Yeah. I do think it's like really weird. He just pulled up, like yeah, I, it just no, nah. like call, like I don't know, it's weird. Um, we cut back to Teresa and Ryan now. Yeah. And she's saying they're not engaged. She's saying that he asked and she did not respond. Yeah, and that's what made her bolt. To me, um, that's worse. Yes. Than them being engaged and her disappearing. And because you kind of just left this guy hanging. It's a lot of emotions. And she makes she brings this up now. She's like, he has a nice steady job. He's not a drunk. He's not a drug addict. He's not a criminal. Like so many people in their neighborhood. Right. She's like, and on top of all that, he actually loves me. And she's like, I genuinely mean that. Like, I know he loves me and he cares about me. Yeah. And I'm just like. But here you are with Ryan. I understand what she's saying. She's like, I need to figure it out for myself. Because Ryan's like, what about you? And she's like, I don't know. I'm thinking. And she's saying she doesn't want to just get caught up in the whole stay where I am, get married, have a baby, like stuck there forever. Which is fine. But don't. But then Ryan's like, you're 17. Yeah. I'm like, so what are you doing? Like, engaged like, to 17 never sounds like a good idea. But it's like, maybe just talk to Eddie. Like, yeah. what is with people from Chino and not talking? <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, don't go hunting down the ex boyfriend that you still have feelings for to talk to him about what you're and going through. And she's mad at Ryan for just disappearing. So she turns around and just disappears and her boyfriend? Yeah. Like, <laughs> And then he's so it's, forgiving with her about the whole, the whole lie. It's so weird. It's too big of a, like, lapse of acknowledgement. Not only are you dating still with Eddie and you're still kind of trying to... But he to proposed win, and you he, ran away. Right. Like, what is going on? And you're just so like, oh, it's whatever. It's, it's very bizarre. It's whatever. Uh, very bizarre. Um, so, uh, Summer shows up. And She's like, um... You know, she's trying, she's being like, there's ways around your strike. Yes. And Cohen's like, no. <laughs> yeah, he shuts her down, kicks her right out the house. It's hilarious. So funny. It's like, it's, it, this is, Seth Cohen is at, at a 10, right? And he's, and the funny thing about it is like, he's being funny right now, but he's being funny in a way that Seth's never been funny before, right? Yeah, and it's like. like a, it's a, it's a per, on purpose laugh yeah. instead of a, a light laughter, which is, is so funny. Um, we um, cut to my favorite moment of the entire episode. 
good. Like I almost gave Caleb MVP. Um, Caleb shows up to Julie's house with flowers. Yeah. He never says like I'm sorry, but he's just like he's like trying to be too nice. Yeah. And Julie's like, oh, and she seems like she's about to be like, well, come in. And then she's like, is this a booty call? <laughs> And he's like, what's a booty call? And he says that so awkwardly. Like, you can tell he's genuinely never heard the phrase booty call. And then she explains what a booty call is. And she said, that's what this is. Yeah. And she slams the door in his face. My favorite part of the whole thing is yep. that she turns the lights off on her porch. Yeah. It's so funny. But then Caleb, in the dark on her porch, mutters to himself, it was a booty call. Booty call. <laughs> <laughs> and it just... It was so funny to me. Like, yeah. I was like, shit, he is Seth's grandpa. Like, you know? <laughs> like, it was really funny. It was, like, too... It's so good. Like, him saying... Like, him not knowing what a booty call was, but then he sat there in the dark, and he was like, it is a booty call. It just was so... It was so, so funny. funny. I loved it. It was so good. Um, we transitioned to... Let's see. Um, Seth. Sandy. Oh. Or Sa- Sandy, sorry, yeah, Sandy is... Sandy's, like, inquiring more about Uncle Sean to Kirsten, but yep. this time more seriously. Yeah. And because Kirsten's made it very clear. Like, she genuinely has no idea I what have, this guy does. I have no clue. Like, he's a liaison. Yes. Okay. And then, um, once again, it transitions to... <laughs> Making fun of Ryan again. Yeah, so Teresa so shows up to dinner with yes. the Collins, mm-hmm. and they all transition their inquiries into, so Seth at first is talking just to Ryan. He's like, what's going on? He's like, nothing. She's actually engaged. <laughs> He's like, what? what? Then it transitions to the Collins asking Seth, like, what's going on? They're not just friends. And he's like, well, mother, is a telenovela. And it's just hilarious. Like he's breaking down all the drama. Yeah. Um, they show Marissa at home with Jimmy. In the dark before Jimmy appears, like all the lights off. Why are you and then why are you with Ryan? <laughs> I like Jimmy's advice though. He like genuinely gives her like solid advice. He's like, Oh, for sure. You want him, just go after him, communicate your feelings, yeah. like you guys talk just to him. To, yeah, talk. they just talk to him. Like, stop trying to have sex with him. Stop he literally to make goes. Out he goes. Stop talking to me and talk to Ryan. Like, <laughs> so funny. Like he, because he genuinely is like, does Ryan know that you're saying all this? Like, mm-hmm. he's like, I mean, I am happy you're opening up to me, but like, maybe you should open up to Ryan. Yes, exactly. He's like, just go after him. Like, if that's what you want, go for it. Like, until he tells you no, this isn't yeah. happening. Be done with it. Like, you need to pursue it until he tells you no. He's like, but you two just ignoring each other and crying doesn't work for me. Jimmy even so, acknowledges that they're not friends. <laughs> it's so funny. He's like, when were you guys friends? Like, he's like, you're either in a relationship or you guys aren't a thing. Y- like, exactly. <laughs> uh, they then cut back to Teresa having dinner with the Coens. Yeah. Telling stories about Ryan. Everyone's laughing. It's so mm. lighthearted. Like, it's not dramatic. It's no. just lighthearted fun. We find out Sandy um, did musicals. He was in Greece. Don't get him started. Yes. Just so um, Marissa shows up at the door and Kirsten answers it and is like, <laughs> holy shit, this is awkward. Um... Should she have? This reminds her? you of like Thanksgiving or whatever. Whenever uh, yeah, everyone, summer came. Yeah, every, yeah. Summer was Should there, she have there. warned Marissa like Teresa's in there? Right. She just let her in the door and like nothing was going on. It's weird. Um, Very. but Marissa makes the best of it, I guess. Like, she doesn't seem phased by it when she sits down. She's like, "So, what are we talking about?" Like, um, so awkward. It's very awkward, though. Uh. The next morning, Seth wakes Ryan up, kind of, by being yep. like, Eddie's on the phone. <laughs> and he's like, I don't want to talk to him. Like, Very awkward. Eddie hangs up the phone. It's um, so awkward. It's really awkward. And Ryan won't <laughs> confirm or deny anything to Seth. He's just kind of like not talking to him. kind of wondering about, about it, right? 
Uh, Caleb and Sandy. Mm. Caleb is very mad that Sandy won't defend Uncle Sean. Yep. Um, it's weird. And then Caleb makes the same threat as More Uncle Sean. Yeah. He's like, you know what? You don't let this go. He's going to get questioned by the DA. He's going to start airing our dirty laundry. And he's like, by that, that will put Kirsten in this situation. Yes. And Sandy's just like, I like, what are you doing? Like, she doesn't know anything. He's like, well, she signs his paychecks. She is above him. Like, yeah. she's high up here. Get, like, she is get, responsible. She'll get dragged just like every, you know what I mean? Just like people everybody. that were responsible. Exactly. Um, I love what he said. If you build your empire on quicksand, then or later it'll sink. <laughs> That's exactly why I don't like black, like, I hate blackmailing because it's like, you know, if you shouldn't be in a position to be blackmailed, Mm -hmm. you know, like, don't do that and then you won't get yourself into those situations. Then we transition to some more awkward moments. Summer and Anna. It's pretty awkward. It's like, you know. Like a somewhat of an apology? Yeah, it's, like, not full-blown, but kind of, where she's, like, you know, like, I'm sorry this all went down this way, I guess. She kept saying, I guess, and I was, like, you're either sorry or you're not. (laughs) Um, But then Anna's, like, why did you go through all this if you're not even going to be with him? Yep. And I don't know why Summer, like, opens up to Anna, but she really does, and she's really honest. She's, like, I just don't want everyone to know if he dumps me because that's what happens. Yeah. She's like, that's why I can't be public with him because then the second we're not together anymore, everyone will know. Yeah. And then, oh my God, Seth Cohen broke up with me. Imagine that. <laughs> like, you don't have to say that, Summer. Like, yeah. Come on. It, yeah. Um, it's really sad, though. Mm. Um, and then we transition to the worst moment. <sighs> Julie calls Luke for a booty call. And she specifically says this is a booty Yeah, she goes, hey, Luke, blah, 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 meet me later, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? Luke, this is a booty call. And it's like, Ugh. Vomit, literally. <laughs> and then Anna tells Seth. Everything. Everything. Which makes me uncomfortable because that's not why Summer told you all that. Like, no. But I guess she has nice intentions. Still very um, awkward, though. It's very awkward. Just her even having these conversations is still weird, very weird for me. And then more awkwardness. Marissa <laughs> goes to talk to Teresa, and it's cut with Ryan going to talk to Eddie. Yeah. So Marissa's kind of like talking to Teresa, like, do you want Ryan? Because, like, I do, and, like, I don't want to do this if, like, you guys are just getting together. Like, yep. And then Ryan is coming clean to Eddie that he has seen Teresa. Yep. All situations are very awkward. Everybody has seen everybody. Everybody wants everybody. Freddie wants Teresa. Marissa wants Ryan. Teresa is not sure who she wants. Ryan's. Ryan definitely just wants Teresa. Nobody else. Yeah. Ryan wants Teresa. Um, Teresa giving Marissa a random church lesson. In the mid- I get what she's saying though. She's trying to say like her whole life she did want to just get married, but then now that she's in the position to do it, she's like, that's not what it's really about. And like yep. she doesn't want to just get married to get married. Yeah. And but I still think it's all really awkward. But I just want to say, as of this second, right now, not in the future or any other time. Eddie is in the right. Eddie's being like, I want to provide for Teresa. I want to have a life with Teresa. We've already discussed it. Like, this is the next step in our current relationship. Yeah. Can you please not interfere? Yeah. Because he is saying, like, Teresa and I have talked about this. Teresa and I are on this path. Like, this isn't we've talked about having Teresa. We've talked about getting married. Yeah. Like family like atmospheres. Like, it's not fair that Ryan just is put in the middle of it, but it's like he's saying, like, listen, bro. Like, it wasn't like one-sided thing that Eddie wanted for him and Teresa. He's like, Teresa and I discussed this. Yeah. 
it's it the wasn't just made up in my mind yeah, yeah it wasn't like just made up in my mind i'm not going quick. he's like saying like it's completely random that she just ran away like this like maybe it's just like cold feet about like becoming an adult per se i guess yeah but like I mean, he's like the whole down 17 years old is kind of weird but you know but he's saying like it was a progression in their relationship like it yeah. wasn't like random or like forced upon her exactly and he's yeah. like can you please just back off yeah it's like back to fuck off bro like this is like I'm and serious. i just want to say like for now eddie's in the right um yeah. just for now just for now um Here marissa is oh. leaving the hotel yes as julie is going into the room next to her and it's a really yes. cool shot it was fantastic. Uh, it's super door. awkward. Yeah. I hate it. I hate but it here. Then it gets better. It does. Um, so the kissing booth that Summer was approached to do is mm-hmm. taking place. There's a yeah. huge line, by the way. Massive line. Um, Massive how many kids line. go to this school? Um, I don't know. We only ever see like eight of them. So Yeah um cohen kind of cuts in the line he like gives somebody a 10 it's hilarious and then he tells summer like quietly like can you just acknowledge me yeah and she's like cohen i'll i am you later and the kid neck that's doing the male part of the kissing booth is like do you know that dork yeah and then she's like he's just in one of my classes and then seth is like no like acknowledge me now or lose me forever and it's really big and he climbs up on top of the kissing coffee booth. cart oh yeah like, oh, yeah i mean it's like the coffee cart but it's right now it's a kissing booth. yeah and he's like telling summer again he's like acknowledge me now or lose me forever and he's like yes i'm a dork yeah. i listen to emo, emo music but i like her and we're together yep. and he's like i'm not like making this up like we're together yeah and i just want to say all the girls in the line are obsessed they're oh like, my this god. is so cute. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah, they went from, oh my like, god, what is this dork doing to like... To being like, this is so romantic. Oh I love god. this. Oh like, she has to kiss him. Like, this right. is so cute. Oh my, he would have had a line out his door if she wouldn't have kissed him. Like, yeah, he for been, sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it would have transitioned into... Yeah. Because it's a big gesture. And it's romantic. I and... Summer looks at him, and I don't think she ever has a doubt. Like, she, once he stands up, she, like, looks at him, like, oh, my God, this is so nice. Like, yeah. she's looking at him the same way all the other girls are. Yeah. And she stands up, and she kisses him, and it's yeah. so cute. It is. It little... It's so pure, and, like, I just love it. The episode could have ended there. It was just so, like. And then we have the, it, the we had the funny but awkwardness of Anna smiling, very it's happy so for him. so uncomfortable. So weird, but she's very happy because, like, her and and Seth are friends, right? You know what I mean. Yeah. They were f- prior to the relationship. She always they actually in- were friends. Yeah, she was always interested in Seth because of like the, the their interests they had in common. and like yeah. But like they were friends prior to that. But um, everyone's mushy. Everybody's happy. And then we could have ended here. We would have rode off in the sunset. It would have been a beautiful thing. But we end with Ryan and Teresa, and she's kind of like. He's telling her not, he's not telling her to go home, but he's not telling her to stay. It's like this really weird thing. It's a very and Ryan then, Atwood conversation. Yeah. And then she's like, I don't really want to go. And he's like, I can give you a reason to stay. Mm. Which I would just want to say it was quite a line. It was. It was a fantastic line. Yeah. Um, and and they show a on, uh, on, the phone. on the phone off the hook. Hmm. I just want to say, I still feel for Eddie only right now. Yeah, right now. Um, I'm really sorry that my last MVP was Ryan. Um, this episode proved he was not worthy of that. <laughs> yeah, mine was... Uh... Who's your MVP for this episode? I went Seth. Yeah, that's a good one. I went, I went Anna. And... I did because throughout this entire awkward moments of what's going on, she's still giving advice to Seth. She gave advice ish. You know, she listened to summer kind of deal with what she was dealing with type of situation too, which is very hard on her. And then the progression throughout the entire episode of, of, of 
we see more Seth growing as we've talked about and we've been wanting from him. And finally he's kind of stepped up and was a man, but I don't think he would have done that without the push from Anna and then calling him out and basically saying that, Hey, quit being a pussy. Like just do it. You know what I mean? That's like true. profess your love. So I liked it. Yeah. Um, do you have a fun fact? I actually do. I hope my favorite listener hasn't spoiled it for you. Um, Earlier, Kirsten was like, don't bring up musicals like San Diego Grease. Peter Gallagher really did Grease in college. <laughs> oh, that's so good. It's really good. I want to find video of it. Oh, my God. We need to find video of, of Peter Gallagher. I just want to say, I watched um, Saturday Night Fever today. And, you know, not a heavy movie for during the day. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but I could not stop picturing Peter Gallagher as the lead actor in it yeah, instead of John Travolta. And it was really funny. That's so good. I remember him. He played Cesar in The Idolmaker, which is really what kind of put him on the map. And he was fantastic in that. It's like um, when I was growing up, that was my mom's favorite movie like ever and that was my introduction to peter gallagher as a as a person and he was so good like i remember watching it and he was just like you were mesmerized by him in it because i mean it was he was young he was handsome he had the eyebrows and yeah i remember one time uh peter gallagher and i actually had a twitter exchange uh, over that movie because he was doing like a that's so uh, cool he was saying something about it and i was like you know because like ray sharkey what the main character he had like passed away and i was like what was it like working with him or whatever and he responded to it so um you know i feel like we're best friends we're not because you haven't come on the show yet peter gallagher but uh you know i hope one day one day we're gonna get somebody from the oc on the show uh, I'm going to post the Josh Schwartz thing. And if you're listening to this part right now, like tag everybody in the OC, come on the OC podcast. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to get. I wonder, like, I, I wonder if Misha Barton is the best person to go after. I, I've tried to reach out. Like, you know what I mean? We're just, we're just going to do, you know what I mean? Like, we're just, that's what we're I wonder do. if maybe she saw my Instagram and she was like, she watches the Hills. She probably doesn't want me. I don't know. We have to figure it out. Somebody listening, tag some people in this, get them on their show. It'd be fantastic. Do us a favor, head on over to Twitter. Give Kenzie a follow at Ken Venunu. Give myself a follow at Ricky Villar underscore. Thank you for the continued support of the show. Um, this is the final show of the new year, or the this year, sorry. So next time, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so it would be the end of 2020. Um, we hope you guys have a fun and safe Happy New Year, and um, we are inching closer and closer to the season one finale. I can't believe that this was a a little bit of a just a text message between the two of us, and now we are 20 episodes deep into the OC podcast, and this has been amazing. It's been fun. Um, it's like I'm not a- excited for the first season to end because the first season is my favorite season, as I know many of our listeners would agree. Yeah. But... I do like that we're like, Summer's a better character. Yes. Seth is coming into his own. Like, I am excited for, like, I really like the finale of this season. I think it's a great finale. It's the highest rated episode of the entire season. So I'm kind of excited to get to that. Me too. But I will miss the first season. I will as well. But if you're listening... Stay home on New Year's Eve, like Seth Cohen did. Um, Just watch Carson Daly. I don't know. Is he still on TV? I don't know. (laughs) But that's what Seth Cohen did on New Year's Eve. So you guys, please stay at home on Christmas Eve. Watch the OC. Yes. Christmas. You said Christmas Eve, but New Year's Eve too. New Year's Eve, Uh, whatever. (laughs) Same, Same thing. It's an Eve. That's all that matters. But uh, thank you guys so much for supporting us each and every week. It makes it uh, that much better. And uh, until next time, we'll talk to you guys later.